Hi guys, I'm skipping ahead to next week's Year for Challenge. Um, I want to talk about the caretakers of death. Since we're doing death and dying, um, it is really important to talk about caretakers. Um, in the most obvious sense, those caretakers are going to be hospital people. Uh, doctors, nurses, um, hospice people. Uh, people that come to your home that are still doctors or nurses. Um, a lot of times it's family. Someone will have a mother-in-law move in to take care of them. <coughs> Sometimes it's not even a death-dying situation. It's a permanent health issue situation. Um, whether we're talking about Alzheimer's, whether we're talking about uh, a physical degenerative condition, whether we're talking about cancer. Um, caretakers are the earth angels, really. Uh, it's weird to think that we leave people, we, we literally just leave the dying to die. We do, very simply. Um, you know, maybe a preacher will visit, uh, maybe a nun will visit. I, you know, there's no protocol. If you are dying, you're dying. And in our culture, we, we just kind of, we write that off. All right, well, they're dying. We're going to go take care of the people that are living, basically. And that's the medical triage thing. Very, very simply, you know, we need to take care of the ones that are going to survive. And we, we want that, obviously, yes. But we we also want to know that our, our dying are, are being treated with respect. Um, a lot of times that respect is pain medication. I know when my aunt was in hospice care in her home, uh, her nurse was my cousin, her daughter. And uh, a lot of times the kindest thing that she could do for her mother was give her the pain meds. Uh, of course, obviously that meant that she was kind of out of it. But you're coherent enough to understand that you're dying you're coherent enough to not want to be in pain totally totally um and I thought to myself through that whole process how difficult it must have been for her to watch her mother basically wither away everybody knew it was closed everyone knew she had cancer this was like her fourth round with cancer um and she had decided that she wasn't going through any more horrible treatments she'd been very very sick with chemotherapy um and this was years and years ago so it wasn't you know you got a pretty cap it was literally they tried to kill you and then bring you back in order to kill all the bad cells there wasn't any nutritionist there wasn't any there wasn't any anything really um and because they didn't have very many treatments everything was testing you know this may kill you but it may also save you uh, in lab rats, this is performed very well. And you're like, well, I'm dying. Might as well try it. And then it'd go away and then it'd come back. Um, so her caretakers became her daughters, basically. Um, because the woman was a nurse, she took, you know, priority care and was able to give her the medicines because all the legal stuff, you know, and whatnot. Um, so she did a very big job, especially at the end. Um, things got really, really bad. And everything starts shutting down and it's just miserable. Um, she, I mean, I don't, I didn't see her coherent. She was pretty much gone. And even by the time I had gotten to visit her, she didn't pass for like another day or two. Not only is it difficult to see the people that you love wither away, but also to know that you want to give them the best that you can while they're still here. Even if that means um, soft bed sheets, a nice pillow. Um, if they can't eat, maybe you can light a scented candle, their favorite scent. Um, but there is an immense amount of stress in being a caretaker in general. And then even talking about hospice care, I'm talking about taking care of your family, I'm talking about even parents. Caretaking is extremely stressful. Even if it's not physically, even if you don't have to, to turn them over, even if there's a nurse to come that turns them over and takes care of them, there is an emotional and mental stress that comes with being a caretaker. 
So when you're caretaking someone who is dying and going through the process, there's, there's a tremendous stress upon you, not only to make this the best, to make them comfortable, to make them happy, um, you are responsible for them dying. And that is, that is a, a, a mind blower in itself. Um, I had the honor of going to visit um, a big hospice care facility uh, in Frederick, Maryland. And one of my friend's parents um, volunteers there, donates a lot of their time, also money there. Um, and it was not at all what I expected, honestly. Because if you go through a hospital, um, or even, you know, a care facility, if we're talking about nursing homes at that point, stark white halls, uh, you know, doors spaced every so often. It's just very, smells like cleaning liquid. Do you know what I mean? This was completely different. It was like a home. Each room had its own special decor kind of theme. Um, there was a bathroom, there was a bed, uh, there were nightstands. Like it was, it was like somebody's bedroom, essentially. Um, most of them had like a little love seat or somewhere that people could sit and visit. Uh, it was, it was really nice. Of course, I understand that this is one of those hospice places that costs a pretty good deal of money. Um, but they treated their patients extremely well, extremely well. Everyone was surprisingly happy. Like literally everyone was surprisingly happy. I expected it to just be like everyone just a zombie. Like I'm here, I'm going to do my job and that's all there is to it. Um, you know, we talked with two of the nurses, I think, uh, you know, heard them talk about how basically how sad it is when someone passes, uh, but they were grateful for the time that they got to spend with them while they were there, uh, which is always interesting because I wonder how, you know, how do doctors and, and people deal with losing people? Because when you're a hospice nurse, when you're a nursing home person, uh, you know these people are, are going, you know, people are on their way till death. Ah. Uh, how, how do you mentally cope with that? And uh, it was interesting. All, everyone was extremely positive. Uh, you know, basically, she said, you have a choice. You know, we know that they come here and they're dying. But, duh, we're hospice center. Uh, so we get to know them. You know, we have the opportunity to get to know them, to learn from them. Um, you know, I'd like to learn from every person that comes here, every person that touches our lives, this life so we get to touch. And I was like, wow, that's a completely different perspective than the nursing home perspective that you, you typically see is, uh, they're here till they die and then someone new comes. That's it. They're not human at that point. Do you know what I mean? And I think that that's what we need more of as far as caretaking and facility facilities go. Obviously things have gone uphill as far as nursing homes uh, because they aren't really nursing homes anymore. Uh, they're now, you know, very lively communities for the elderly, which is amazing. I love that, I love that. Um, but for the people that choose to caretake at home, um, you know, she had said that there are a lot of groups uh, so the people that perhaps have caretaken at home and then transferred to the hospice unit, there were a lot of support groups. Um, and I think that's why moms click together so well is because we need our support groups. Um, every caretaker needs a support group and that's kind of the theme in life, right? You, you have to have help. You could get through it alone. It's not going to be that great if you do it alone with other people in your life. It's enriching and meaningful same thing when you're caretaking um, you could do it alone but instead be open to the support of others and, and learning from other people's experience so that you can enrich your own <sighs> what am I asking what am I asking from you this week since this is obviously your challenge I'm asking you to think about what would you do if you had a parent or a sibling uh, that needed to be taken care of. Uh, whether it was a long-term health issue, um, 
or death and dying, how would that make you feel? Uh, you're going to have to change your life around entirely to help and support this person and take care of this person. Um, how are you going to do that? What are you willing to give up versus what do you want to keep if you have to give up so much? Um, how would you manage? For instance, uh, you might have to change your home around. Your living room might become the new medic center. Uh, your car. Are you going to need a different type of car to transport back and forth to doctor visits? Um, pets. Do they have pets? Do you have pets? Are things going to need to be changed to where maybe you baby gate them to half the house? Or they're not allowed around a bed? Uh, how are you going to find support? Will it be through a local caretaker group? Will it be through your family? Will it be through your friends? Uh, how, are you gonna do how are you going to do this? How are you going to do this and not lose your mind and not become numb and not lose yourself in caring for somebody else? Interesting. Interesting. Also, I found these at Target and I bought two because I thought they were cool. Little gratitude trees. I'm going to set mine up. They were in like the, the dollar section. I don't know if you can order them online, but it's really cool. I liked it. I got two, mostly so I could use one as a template. I think I'm going to make the kids paper ones and let them play with it. This is like a, a cheesy, cheesy kind of wood, but probably stand up better than paper. I'll figure out something. I wanted to make one for the kids. Um, but that's cool from Target. Target, Target, Target. Uh, so this is, again, a thinking, a thinking week. This isn't a sorting through pain week, but obviously it has to involve a little bit of thinking about pain because someone's going through a loss. Also, you are going through a loss because you volunteered to take care of that person. Um, how are you going to deal with guilt? How are you going to deal with needing to have time off, needing a break? How are you going to deal with whatever comes your way? How are you going to deal? Okay. I like to always have a plan in place just in case. Because worry is worry is the mind killer. Worry is so very the mind killer. Um, so if you think through things, which has been this whole year so far, not only dealing with things, but thinking about how we would deal with potential situations. Um, this is a situation where a lot of people now are really are really dealing with this. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's make it a norm. Let's be more supportive of each other. All right. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye.